Today we are going to talk about the acute workup of stroke. And so when a patient comes into the hospital and they had any sudden change of their neuro exam, such as unilateral weakness, um, drooping of one side of the face, slurring of speech, any altered mental status, when it comes on fairly suddenly, you definitely want to rule out stroke. So you have some sort of focal neurologic deficit. And the first thing you want to do as the patient is getting wheeled into the ED is do an NIH uh, stroke scale. And so this can help you, NIH stroke scale. So this can help you determine how severe the stroke is and can help you with some treatment options moving forward. So you definitely wanna get that scale right away. And then also they should be getting wheeled almost straight to the CT scanner. You wanna get a non-contrast CT stat and gold standard is to get this 20 to 25 minutes from when they walk into the door and be read within 40 minutes of the patient getting to the door. Um, one of the things that helped me remember why it's a non-contrast CT is that if you were to use contrast in a CT, it could show up as um, basically mixed up with bleeding. And so you get the CT to see, is there a bleed or is there no bleed? And if you were to use contrast, this can alter those results. So non-contrast CT, and then like I said, you're basically determining bleed or no bleed. So if there are signs of bleed, then that would be constituted as a hemorrhagic stroke. This is about 15% of the strokes that you'll see, much less common than ischemic strokes. And um, mainstay of treatment for this will be blood pressure control. Basically trying to control the blood pressure so it's high enough that the brain continues to get perfusion, but not too high that the bleed continues to um, occur in the brain. And so you'll be using antihypertensive IV medications. Sometimes there's a need for pressures if the blood pressure goes too low. So blood pressure is the big mainstay of treatment. You also, depending on timing and the patient's presentation, you could consider using some fresh frozen plasma as well. Um, most of what we'll talk about will be ischemic strokes because that is mostly what you'll see. So if you do a non-con non CT and you don't see any bleed, that means it is likely an ischemic stroke. And so that is about 80%, 85%, excuse me, of the strokes that you'll see. And right when you see that the CT is negative, what you want to know next is basically at what point did the stroke start? So you need to know their last known normal. The reason this is important is because it will determine whether you consider using TPA or no TPA. And so if it's less than 4.5 hours, they are a TPA candidate. And so you could consider pushing TPA. If it's been longer than 4.5 hours from their concerned last known normal, you still want to give anticoagulation, but in this case, TPA um, may do more harm than good. And so you would want to give a full dose of aspirin. So aspirin 325 for anticoagulation. And what you'll see a lot of times in the hospital is patients will show up and they woke up from sleep and they have, you know, one side drooping or something of that nature. And usually patients fall into the greater than four and a half hours category if they went to bed normal and then woke up with these symptoms just because we can't determine exactly when that stroke occurred. But if you do have a moment where, say, your patient said that they were talking to a friend, all of a sudden they noticed their speech was slurred and they were in the ambulance an hour later, they definitely are a TPA candidate at that point. And so um, if you give TPA, of course, contraindications to TPA are recent brain surgery or any sort of significant head trauma or bleed in the previous three months. Um, if they're on warfarin or if they're on another kind of DOAC, that would be a contraindication. Or if they had um, yeah, any sort of acute bleeding or any sort of recent injury. But we'll say our patient doesn't have any of that. So you give TPA and then you want to repeat non-con CT 24 hours later 
basically to make sure that um, you giving the TPA didn't result in hemorrhagic conversion of stroke because that is also a phenomenon that happens. A stroke starts out ischemic and then it converts hemorrhagic um, typically within the first 24 hours and that risk is increased when you give TPA. So like I said, more often than not, they'll come in with an ischemic stroke. You'll ask what their last known normal is and then you'll decide TPA, no TPA. The next thing you want to ask is, is there a large vessel occlusion? The reason that this is important is because it shows whether they're a candidate for surgery or not. And so a large vessel occlusion would be an MCA stroke where the whole MCA is occluded. And you can usually see gray, white matter, um, decrease in differentiation, or you can see MCA sign, which means there's an increased density in the occluded artery. These can all be taken from the CT. And if there are signs that there's a large vessel occlusion, like the karate, like the MCA, and this is a very, very big stroke, if it's within 24 hours, um, they are a candidate for mechanical thrombectomy. So you want to be calling your neurosurgeons and getting them into surgery. If it's beyond that 24 hours, so say a patient presents three days later, obviously they're out of the window for TPA. Even if they have large vessel occlusion, they're out of the risk or they're out of the window for um, mechanical thrombectomy as well. And so at this point, then you start moving into stabilizing the patient and figuring out basically why this stroke happens. And so you want to get stroke labs, which we'll talk about in a different video, and then just further imaging workup um, to figure out why they had this stroke, what we can do to make sure that it doesn't happen again, and what we can do to make sure it doesn't progress. So just really quick review, patient comes in with sudden focal neurological deficit, you're doing the NIH stroke scale the second they walk in. You're getting a non-con CT stat, so you can determine bleed or no bleed. Um, if there's a bleed, blood pressure control is going to be your mainstay of treatment. If there's no bleed, it's likely ischemic, and you need to know their last known normal, and it is, is it a large vessel occlusion? So last known normal, if it's less than four and a half hours and they don't have any major contraindications, push TPA because the benefits of breaking up that stroke are greater than um, the risks of causing a bleed in those patients. And then you want to repeat a non-con CT just to make sure you didn't cause a bleed. And then if they do have large vessel occlusion, um, if it's within that 24-hour range, call your neurosurgery friends, get them in for a mechanical thrombectomy to get that clot out of there. Otherwise, at this point, you start moving into more subacute workup where you're getting stroke labs, you're getting further diagnostic imaging to figure out why the stroke happened and to make sure it doesn't happen again.